Welcome everyone, we'll be starting in uh, just a few minutes and um, actually less than three and we'll be uh, sharing some of the first outputs of the uh, COVID-19 beer hub since July 27th. More than 3,900 immunization practitioners have come together to work together to keep vaccination going during the pandemic. Um, and <laughs> thank you, uh, Kamal Lawal. I, if you are, I have no doubt that you are very interesting. As a, uh, but perhaps you meant this is very interesting. I don't know which one it is. Maybe you can clarify. And please do tell us what city and country. Uh, you are connecting from. So we'll be starting in just over two minutes. Stay with us uh, and we'll be looking at your comments and questions as we go. Welcome to the Geneva Learning Foundation. I'm Reda Sadki and uh, very happy to welcome you from the 14th of September for this global event. This means that the General Assembly of the COVID-19 Peer Hub, which happens every Monday, is now uh, happening. And if you are following us on Facebook, uh, please um, you know, let us know where you are connecting from, share your city and country, and we'd be happy to, uh, uh, to, uh, to share this as we just did for uh, Ian. All right, so what are we up to? Uh, we are celebrating the collective effort and of health workers all over the world who continue to work every day to protect children from vaccine preventable diseases during the pandemic. More specifically, since on July 27th, over 3,900 immunization staff from 96 countries came together in the COVID-19 peer hub to share experience, spread ideas, and take action to keep vaccination going during the pandemic. Uh, let's go to Alain Blaise Tatsinko, who's been one of the uh, leaders of the COVID-19 peer hub. Alain Blaise Tatsinko, how are you? And uh, what would you like to tell us about today, where we're going to be listening to the voices of participants in the Peer Hub, sharing some of the first outputs? 
Hey, good afternoon, Reda. Uh, so I'm very, 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 very excited to be here and really happy as well. So today is the second week of where we are sharing something that I think is very important to those who are in the room. We are sharing uh, the experience. We are sharing uh, what we've done during the six weeks. So I'm, I'm really excited to be here to, to, to really listen about how that project that we developed was intended to enhance our contribution to the response of the COVID-19 as scholar, oh, we are going to take it. So yes, I would like to congratulate all of you who, are, who were able to complete the, the, the action plan. I'm looking forward to hear the insightful, uh, all what you gain from the ideas engine, your participation with your colleague and uh, your piece, and looking forward to see how that will help to uh, actually take action at the field level. So thank you very much, Breda, and uh, nice to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Shalini Kari uh, from uh, India is also uh, with us. She has also been uh, helping to lead the uh, COVID-19 Peer Hub. Shalini, what would you like to say? What's on your mind uh, today? As we are basically, we've got a two-week pause in which we have begun to share some of the outputs of the uh, uh, Peer Hub. Thank you, Reda, and hi, everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. And Reda, I'm extremely excited. Um, these six weeks have been phenomenal. And um, I mean, the experiences that the scholars wrote about in the Ideas Engine and the projects they did were absolutely phenomenal. And I'm, I'm hoping to hear about their experiences and how they, they uh, you know, how they found the platform and how they shared their experiences with their peers and, uh, yeah, and, and about their actions. So it's, it's really great to be here and to hear all of you. Thank you, Reda. Over to you. Thank you, Shalini. Uh, Charlotte Embu is currently on leave this week, but she'll be back next week and we'll hear from her uh, as well. So uh, just a reminder, and for those of us, uh, those of you who are joining us on Facebook, perhaps for the first time, uh, 3,904 participants were selected to join the Peer Hub on the 27th of July. And here, a reminder, I shared this last week as well, 96 countries, and you can see large numbers of applicants uh, and uh, from some countries and you know, a fairly selective process. Uh, most participants from the Ministry of Health national and subnational levels. Um, and very quickly, within the first two weeks, this initial group, you know, the enthusiasm, the energy, the challenge of figuring out how to keep vaccination going during the pandemic led to the generation of more than 1,200 ideas. Now, this I said last week. What's new this week is that we have the final number of action plans that have been produced. And altogether, it's a round number, <laughs> you know, which is pure coincidence. Um, we have submitted 700 action plans to describe and how, you know, and to describe the actions needed in a specific context to keep vaccination services going. Now, this is not some click-through exercise or some, you know, this was intense thinking, reflection, analysis, uh, context analysis, and then followed by peer review, the peer-reviewed part of, exercise, of the exercise. That meant figuring out how to give feedback to others on how they could improve their action plans to keep vaccination going, and reciprocally, making sense of the feedback received from others. Now, just a quick point of order. Uh, some of you Anglophones are starting one of two courses. There is the WHO Scholar Level 1 Certification in Routine Immunization Activity Planning and the course on Electronic Immunization Registry from the Pan American Health Organization. So I'd like to say, if you have been selected for either of those courses, we have planned for that, and we will be able to accommodate your continued participation in the Peer Hub um, and you will be able to opt out of some activities if it's too much. We urge you to prioritize the courses themselves, but ultimately we trust you to make the right choices that will be reasonable and that will make sense for you uh, in order to um, you know, continue to complete the courses and you know, complete the activities that you choose to participate in in the Peer Hub. Now, the big news this week, what we didn't share last week, is actually the results by country of the... Um, 
the um, the peer hub participation in exercise one. So altogether, we have 700 people who have submitted a final exercise one. But then here are the francophones. So that's why this slide is in French. You can see the countries here. And in some cases, a few people who are from English-speaking countries or, you have, um, or who speak English might have sort of registered themselves for the other language. Uh, but you can see the numbers here. And... For the Anglophone countries, I'm going to move myself out of the way so you can find find your own country on the uh, on the on the screen and uh, see how you did. Now, there's eight people who you know, did not register their email or used a different email, so we're reconciling those. I think we've uh, Minja and our team has already figured out who they are, but these are the. Uh, uh, the final numbers now for the action plans. Now the action plan was the most intense part of this sort of stage one of the uh, uh, the peer hub. And what we'll be doing, I'll be as you know, I'll be explaining this uh, on the uh, uh, next slide. Is uh, on the twenty fourth of September, we'll be actually uh, holding a commencement ceremony. It is the commencement, the beginning of. You know, this, the Peer Hub's action. And on the 24th of September at 6 p.m. Geneva, right after this meeting, you'll be receiving the email with the invitation and with a link to register yourself if you want to participate in this. And there, that is the occasion upon which we will very solemnly award the uh, certificate for Peer Hub Exercise 1. And, you know, everyone by that point uh, will have already started with the uh, second part of the uh, exercise. Now, before we get to the commencement exercise, and if you were here last Monday, this is repeating some information. I'll go quickly so we can get to the presentations of the action plans. But it's important to you know, really look at your schedule, look at what's realistic, figure out what level of participation you're going to be able to commit to in the, uh, uh, in the coming weeks. So many countries, there's been a lot of energy and enthusiasm and hard work on building the country team of participants in the Peer Hub. So on the 18th of September, we'll be holding a meeting for team leaders, focal points, but also for all participants who want to support their team leaders and focal points. So you'll be receiving that information as well in an email right after this meeting. And that, if following this, we'll have a procedure which we'll explain during the meeting to formally recognize these country or national teams. Now, if you've been following us on Facebook, you know that uh, three times last week with Charlotte and Boo, we actually did a daily, daily ideas bulletin where in which we invited a member of the Peer Hub who had completed their action plan to share their action plan, but also share more about their context, their experience. We were able to ask some questions as well as uh, participants on Facebook. So that is going to continue to actually resume uh, starting on the 21st. We'll keep doing those. We have 700 action plans. Uh, many of them, uh, you know, surprisingly, I mean, with information, contexts that simply not available anywhere else. So we'll be sharing them. That's one step in which we'll be sharing back with you and other immunization practitioners will be through the uh, Daily Ideas Bulletin. Now, the main feast is on Monday, starting Monday, we'll be kicking off the launch pad. So again, the email you're going to receive, don't miss this one, is going to explain how you're going to join the launch pad and what exactly is it. I'd like to turn to, um, let's see... Um, to Mohammed Imran Qureshi uh, from Pakistan to uh, explain to us. He was a participant in the um, uh, Impact Accelerator Launchpad in July 2019. Imran, uh, welcome. I hope you have uh, recovered from your birthday and we'd love to hear what um, you know, could you tell us and could you explain to um, uh, fellow participants in the Peer Hub what exactly is the COVID-19 Peer Hub? And the, uh, thank specifically you very the much, Launchpad. Uh, and uh, warm welcome to all the colleagues from around the world. So first of all, you know, COVID-19 pandemic was a huge, huge public health challenge for all of us uh, around the world. So no country and no community was spared from this menace. But the real uh, solution for such a huge public health challenge was uh, the, their need for a uh, important launching pad from where we could like uh, summarize all of the challenges we are facing and uh, look forward, what is the way forward, how we can just contribute together towards a common solution. Are, are in, instead, we could say like the, the, the problems which are like varying to some extent in certain communities, 
how they can like figure out uh, what actually we need to do to overcome all of these challenges. And you know, immunization is the best public health product. So how we can like uh, uh, reach to the last child, even during this COVID-19 pandemic, whereas uh, to address the concerns of the mother and the caregivers and provide the due vaccination, which was really required. So uh, as I already said, that the children of the world need uh, all of us uh, more now as compared to the past. So uh, this platform, Geneva Learning Foundation, provided us this COVID peer hub where we can like sit together and figure out, find out and develop our own action plans in the exercise one, where we could like summarize what is the main immunization challenge and uh, to figure out that particular challenge, what is the background of this challenge and what actions are really required to address this immunization challenge? What are the concrete actions which we can take and address this immunization challenge. So I believe during the past few weeks, we are able to develop such a strong action plans that can be utilized by different immunization programs in different countries by which they can like counteract the situation and uh, hope so that they could recover from this COVID-19 pandemic and resume to the business and uh, try to reach to the children which they really require in order to save them from all vaccine preventable diseases, from uh, cases, from outbreaks, and uh, uh, in a larger way, from the mortality and morbidity, just to reduce the mortality and morbidity from vaccine preventable diseases. So in short, uh, in short we all are contributing to this uh, COVID-19 pandemic challenge and the way forward, over. Uh, thanks, thank you very much, uh, Imran. So very quickly, um, Starting on the 21st of September, there is not going to be an, a, a new project to do. There's not going to be any kind of you know, coursework uh, in any way, shape, or form. Instead, we'll be asking you to set a goal for this period of four weeks. You decide what the goal is in relation to your action plan. Uh, and then we'll only ask you to check in. How is it going? Have you made progress? Have you had a su success? Have you had a challenge? Have you had a failure, perhaps? And then during the General Assembly, we'll be hearing from each other about these successes, challenges, and so on. And we'll be encouraging you to connect with others when it makes sense to do so during this period of four weeks. It's after this launch pad that we hope this process will help you accelerate your progress uh, with your action plan. In fact, in July 2019, when we checked in six months later and we compared people who had participated in the launch pad versus people who did not participate in the launch pad, the difference was that people who did participate were eight times more likely to have made significant progress toward implementation of their action plan in that context. So that is really what the Launchpad is about. Shalini Kare was actually in the uh, uh, Launchpad in July 2019. Shalini, would you like to share what is your recollection? What did you gain by participating in the Impact Accelerator last year? So it was a very exciting uh, platform where we were asked to implement our projects. And uh, what my takeaway was that, you know, you can, you can really work along with your country teams and you can come up with one focused plan. And if it works out, then the skill at which you can implement your plan is, is superb. So, uh, I would I would recommend to all the scholars who are from various countries to work, work together and see if it's possible. But uh, if it is not, then they should continue to uh, basically work towards their plans and how they're going to execute them. And this is a great opportunity for you to think through and uh, to achieve your goal. So uh, that, that, I think, is um, a really, really good uh, opportunity for everybody. Thank you. So, yeah, thanks, Reda. Thank you, Shalini. I see Shaz Sajal Duta has a hand raised, and you're welcome to use the Q&A tool. But let's go to Sajal and see what uh, I'm asking you to unmute, Sajal Duta. So I hope your microphone is ready. We would love to hear from you, of course. Okay, looks like that might be a mistake rather than... Uh, 
an intent or a request to uh, uh, to speak. So remember, use the hand raised icon only if you actually want to speak. We might just turn to you and ask you to do so. And we will in a couple of minutes. So uh, two more things, which, yes, uh, I'm repeating from last week, but we have some additional, some new people who are uh, following us on Facebook, a significant number, in fact. So uh, the with respect to Teach to Reach, and I know many of you in the room are Teach to Reach Level 1 certificate uh, completers, we'll be holding a pilot conference on the 12th of October and then um, the um, uh, to cap, you know, to sort of round out or close the year on the 8th of December, large annual conference. Why is this relevant to the Peer Hub? Because country teams will be invited to hold their own workshops within this fully virtual conference that will have a plenary, uh, large number of rooms for workshops as well as networking features that we hope to bring to, uh, uh, to scholars and to uh, immunization practitioners. So that is for the Teach to Reach conference. And then last but not least, the uh, Peer Hub Exercise 2 will kick off on the 2nd of November. And that will be, uh, we will be opening up the Peer Hub again for a second intake of participants. And it will then be, obviously, we'll focus using the peer review project methodology. This time, everyone will be asked to focus on this question of vaccine acceptance vaccine hesitancy demand call it what you will but you have all been you are you are all being confronted by this issue um, on a daily basis um, and so we will be dedicating the last part of the peer hub this year uh, to this uh, to this question through another exercise so that's uh, that's the plan um, and you'll be receiving right after this uh, this assembly you'll be receiving an email with the full details I encourage you to read that email carefully uh, Alain Blaise uh, what would be your advice when uh, in some cases participants receive many emails, they seem to have become quite adept at you know, figuring out what's important and what's not. What is, what is your advice? Yes, me, Breda, thank you very much. My advice would be really to have the email, do not turn down the notification because, in fact, emails that are provided, none of them is like um, um, just an email for the sake of sending an email. Um, some of them are in the, all of them, the course team is taking all the time because we really know that you're busy professional. So our aim is to provide you all the support that you need. If you take five minutes, only five minutes to read through the email and use all the link in there, then you are saving a lot of time. So uh, my advice will be really to make sure that you receive all the email inbox and when you get one, go through it, read it, the, and having in mind that any email is to help me. Not, it's not, we are not generating information in email, but it's really to take action and make sure that you are up to date with the course. So that my general advice will be really, if you are in the P-Hub, make sure that all the email for the P-Hub, you go through all of them because they are there to help you to succeed in your tax at hand. Thank you, Reda. Thank you very much indeed, Alain. Uh, as for Julian Awuma, uh, who says hello, hello back to you. And I'd like to ask you if you could let us know also what city and country uh, you're connecting from in a comment, as well as if you have any questions. So um, we are on Facebook Live today because... Um, and so this general assembly is being shared because we are we have we are beginning to share the outputs from the uh, uh, first six weeks of the uh, peer hub. All right, so this is the recap uh, as well as some additional information about the final results for the uh, uh, for exercise one. And so now over to you. Uh, participants and members of the COVID-19 uh, Peer Hub, we'd like to ask you to raise your hand if you'd like to take on these, uh, answer these five questions, asking you about your experience of the Peer Hub and then asking you also about, obviously, questions three, four, three and four are specifically about your action plan. Okay, thank you, Julian uh, from Cameroon. Thanks. Uh, so we are going to ask you to raise your hand and... Uh, we will. would like to ask, uh, see if there are participants who have not not yet or who have never perhaps spoken in a general assembly. Uh, I'd like to encourage you, really, really encourage you to do so and to uh, uh, raise that hand way up high so we can hear your voice and get to know you as well. So we will start with Amsalu Shifaro, and I want to encourage you to, uh, and I hope the connection is with you, Amsalu, today. Thank you so much, Rada. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm Amsalu Shifarao, joining from Ethiopia. I am working as immunization uh, officer 
for UNICEF country office. So uh, the first question is what has changed for you through the participation in the peer hub? Uh, I think uh, I can say I have able to learn from ideas engine uh, different experience and ideas across the countries as well as across the level of uh, healthcare national subnational and service delivery level and it enriched or broadened my thinking about immunization in the context of uh, covid and number two is uh, the project development process including the rubric guide peer review and then and, and the feedbacks from uh, colleagues helped to to find my my project as well project proposal and improve the quality and then and, and uh, i can say appropriateness and uh, applicability of the project as well uh, Number three, uh, the, the most important one was also the enlightening session, uh, particularly the four or five WS uh, questions from Dr. Francois Charolet and Andrew Shalini and other colleagues as well. Helped a lot to, to, to uh, deepen our analysis and also sharpen the, the plans until uh, I am confident that I can do uh, and how to do. I I I am confident how to do as well as uh, when and then and where to do. So this way, this the enlightening sessions were very important and then uh, it definitely uh, helped to to sharpen my my plans. Uh, the second question: uh, Do you plan to? Go yes, I, I I want to continue as much as uh, I I mean the time allows me, and uh, it's uh, an important and interactive and and in learning experience. It provides us uh, different experience from different participants and scholars as well as a facilitator so it is very helpful and i will continue to uh, participate on this uh, number three is mainly on the challenges that i i worked uh, uh, the challenge was actually uh, the primary healthcare level service uh, providers were are Skeptical, skeptical to properly practice and adhere with uh, infection prevention and control. Uh, as COVID-19 is continuing and its dissemination is also uh, not improving and health workers are susceptible mainly as they are uh, providing service for the public and particularly the primary healthcare level or front uh, line health workers are mainly uh, skeptical uh, because they are not managing actually exclusively the covid cases but they are providing other, other essential services and there are some preliminary data that indicated those health workers working in non-covid health uh, treatment centers are um, infected and this will uh, definitely uh, disseminate the, the COVID as well as it will overstrain the health system and then the, uh, it is uh, critical to to take care so, so so my goal is to improve the IPC perception and practice at least by 30 percent by end of uh, this year uh, currently i don't have uh, the baseline data but uh, some of the, the field observation has indicated that uh, the frontline health workers are skeptical uh, to use the face mask as well as hand sanitizers while providing services because of different reasons and uh, I, I just uh, uh, developed the plan to improve 
the perception and then the use and the adherence of IPC practices among the frontline health workers. Uh, the concrete actions that uh, I, I plan to do are three mainly. Number one is uh, ensure the availability of uh, PPE, particularly face mask and sanitizer at primary health care level and work with the stakeholders including the Ministry of Health and uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, supply agency to avail the essential supplies at primary healthcare facilities and uh, conduct rapid assessment on availability and use of face masks to establish the baseline and then uh, then at the decision level uh, uh, we encourage health workers to swap uh, immunization sessions to mainly to uh, more ventilated uh, areas it could be outdoor it could be wide uh, rooms but it has to be well ventilated and uh, enable them to keep physical distances and then the, the other is uh, encourage health workers to properly uh, use and adhere the practice of particularly face masks and hand washing or hand sanitizers. And number two is uh, conducting risk communication, risk communication on COVID among frontline health workers, including uh, the local data on uh, the prevalence of the COVID among the primary health care level health workers, and incorporate uh, on a, any trainings uh, the WHO guidelines uh, on the use of IPC and conducting immunization in the context of COVID and use of social media platform like uh, telegrams to disseminate key messages. The third, the third key action is uh, incorporate IPC uh, supplies, availability of IPC supplies and the use in the monitoring checklist and conduct uh, around 10 immunization session monitoring and then collect data and provide feedbacks and uh, number three is col collect qualitative and quantitative data and provide uh, feedbacks for for uh, health workers as, as well as for uh, health managers to to improve the adherence and um, use of ipcs uh, number five, how can the peer hub help you? I think the peer hub can help, uh, as, as, as I have said, it uh, definitely uh, helped to improve the plans to ensure uh, applicability or appropriateness. And, and it's also good to monitor the status as well, whether these plans are implemented and what is the status, what are the challenges that uh, we face during the implementation because uh, saying is not, I mean doing is not as easy as saying. So it is very important to monitor, to give feedbacks as well as um, to, to, to learn from others as well. Thank you and over to you uh, Rada. All right, thank you very much indeed. Um, Francois Gass, are there any comments? Uh, feedback you would like to give on this action plan it sounds to me like Amsal Lucifero did work with you <laughs> in the daily sessions you organized with uh, Charlotte and Boo uh, to support the development of the action plans uh, thank you Reda and hello to everyone on the, this call uh, first I said I have not much reason to congratulate Amsalu for such a detailed uh, action plan in a very difficult context and be so specific about the challenge, the action towards the challenge, and the action step to make the challenge occur, and to monitor if action are implement the action step are implemented, and if he's making progress over time in having the uh, protective equipment on the face of all the the workers of the front line, and he has shared a lot during the lightning session of the challenge when you work in a very hot climate when you don't see around a lot of uh, COVID cases, you wonder why you should wear those very inconvenient masks uh, during the heat. And I would say that uh, his, uh, his plan is uh, it's just extremely specific and I'm, I'm happy that he's going to implement it and, lo and looking forward to see 
how he implements it and what results he's getting. And I'm sure all scholars will will learn from him sharing his implementation of the plan that he has carefully crafted in a very, very nice way and very convincing way. Thank you, Rida, and congratulations again, Amsalu, for your project, which makes sense. And if I was a donor, I would fund it. <laughs> Over to you, Rida. Thanks a lot, uh, François Gass. We actually uh, had on the French call with the Francophones, uh, one person who is the EPI manager for his country, who's decided to, yes, uh, following consultation, of course, uh, who's decided to fund the uh, uh, the who secured funding for uh, his project. Having a, just a technical glitch that may take a second or so to to catch. Yeah, we don't want to be watching the uh, uh, the video. We want to share the yes. Here we go. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Francois. So just a quick recap for those of you who are following us on the. Uh, uh, on Facebook, um, we need so we need the next uh, volunteer to raise um, his or her hand, and I especially encourage uh, participants that we have never heard from uh, to speak and to share what you know, share their work, answer the the uh, questions that were up on screen. And for those of you who are following on Facebook, if you haven't, if you're not entirely sure what this is, this is a COVID nineteen peer hub. So, in, on July twenty seventh, over three thousand nine hundred immunization staff from ninety six countries joined together to share experience spread ideas and take action to keep vaccination going during the uh, pandemic. So let's go back to the questions. You have the questions uh, in front of you. I'm going to paste them in again. And really the next 28 minutes are going to be dedicated uh, to you and to hearing uh, your answers to these, uh, to these five questions. So you can share with us about your experience of the Peer Hub as well as uh, present and summarize the main points of your action plans. And we know that if you are uh, in this room, um, seven weeks after the beginning of the launch of the Peer Hub, um, it is almost certain that you have, in fact, you did, in fact, submit the, uh, um, the, so I have Ochu, Ochu Ole Barka, who says the best program I have experienced. Thank you for the kind words. Thanks for this experience, Ochu Ole. I don't believe we have ever heard from you, perhaps uh, in a uh, one of the daily sessions. So I'm asking you to unmute. And uh, we'd love to hear your answers to these five questions uh, if you are able to speak to us. All right. And I know Sajal Dutta had tried, had raised, uh, had a raised hand earlier. So Sajal, if you'd like to go and... Well, just what I'm going to do is we're going to put on a little bit of music while you find uh, your motivation. And really, we want to be encouraging... Um, and encourage you even if you've never spoken before. Well, that is the voice that we'd like to hear. I'm going to go to Marta Ngoi and ask Marta, what, do you remember the first time that you spoke in a uh, scholar meeting? And how did you overcome? Did you have any you know, sort of reservations or concerns uh, before you spoke up? Welcome, Marta. Are you able to Hi, speak everyone. to us? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for giving me the floor. Okay, my first time on speaking in a, in a scholar, scholar meeting. Um, actually, it was it was a good experience. I didn't have any panic because in a, on the background I've been working with my my peers from the very first scholar course I took. That was the grips level one. So we have been having this interaction, though not physically most of the time, but. Um, online so uh, it was not really a big deal for me to talk in the scholar community as the whole the global scholar community so i didn't really have any panic with that i understand martha w what would you say to someone who is in the room they have completed their action plan they've worked hard for the last seven weeks but they're a bit shy or you know they're feeling they're not quite comfortable speaking in this way what would be um, what would be your words to them okay I know they are there and they have wonderful action plans that they have developed for the past seven weeks. And I don't want anybody to feel shy. I will encourage them to come up with uh, their actions plan that they have developed. If there is anything, we are in a community where our contributions count. If there is anything that needs to be um, uh, improved on that action plan, we, together we will do that. and. At the end of the day, we'll be happy because that action plan will go further, not to only create an impact in their community, 
but in their country and also the world as a whole. So we I encourage those who have developed their action plan not to put them under the table, but they should speak out. That's another form of advocacy, and we're here to contribute so that that action plan can be implemented. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martha and Goe from uh, from Cameroon. Um, so, all right, in the meantime, several hands and uh, went up and microphones unmuted. So let's start with Mary Goretti Otieno. Mary Goretti, are you there? Are you able to speak to us, please? Yes, I'm uh, available. Thank you so much, Reda, for the opportunity. The experience has been awesome. Uh, we've managed as a country to use youth to volunteer to help us map out the areas and the families who are in need of uh, vaccination. And so, this has worked a lot. Remember, it was a challenge to have the elderly uh, in the workforce, that is 58 and above. They were told to go and leave, and this made the health workers reduce significantly. And areas where the immunization was um, wanting was hard hit. But with the idea of uh, youth volunteering and mapping, it has worked well, and we are good to go. And as a team, we are now coming up with the one idea or two ideas so that we can achieve the goal we were aiming to achieve in our country. And we had a meeting on Friday with uh, Alain. It was well done. Thank you so much. It is a wonderful experience and an honor to be in the peer hub. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you, Mary Goretti Otieno. Could you tell us where you work, which country, where in the country, uh, and what your, what your role is? I am from Kenya. I'm a researcher. I observe things from the background and offer my advice. I came to learn about Peer Hub, not the Peer Hub, but uh, the challenges we had for immunization before COVID because of the areas I was working in. I'm a lecturer. I work at the university. I we have um, at the women. Uh, study center. So matters of women and especially immunization is close to my heart. And uh, I do a lot to champion using the community. Uh, people, the women I work with, they are the ones I use to champion these courses and it has worked very well. Thank you. And Mary Goretti Otieno, could you tell me can you think of something that you learned during the Peer Hub from interacting with immunization staff, so people who really do the job of reaching children and ensuring that they have all the vaccines that they need? Um, if you are a researcher, you're, you're not uh, working as immunization staff, what did you learn from, intera from those interactions? Uh, I've learned a lot that people, the people on the ground have taken their work seriously. I also learned a lot during the coffee. I was uh, hooked with somebody from India and somebody from uh, Nepal, and we shared a lot. And right now, I could see the enthusiasm people had on this. And if people work like that as a team, we are going to prevent very many diseases which are there in Africa, including COVID. Thank you so much, uh, Mary Goretti Otieno. Uh, glad to hear that Alain is part of your uh, your, your support team, uh, as he is for so many others. And thank you again for raising your hand. Uh, we have now many hands <laughs> raised. Um, so I'm going to go to Abdullahi Palarabe. Uh, Abdullahi, are you? Yeah, yeah. Good evening to everyone. Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Yeah, you have Abdullahi five questions before you. Yeah, good evening to. Balarabi Adlai from Katana State, Nigeria. Actually, the I was very, very excited about the way this program is being handled. Of course, there is a lot of improvement in the area we operate, especially when it comes to uh, demand creation of the regular innovation. So basically, one of the major challenges we faced some few months ago was the peer of the people fear of contacting the virus during regular routine immunization. Of course, through community enlightenment, we have been able to, 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 to record a significant improvement. And then there's, there's a, uh, a peer scholar 
who shared his idea with me some few weeks ago, telling me that in the but there's hardly a lot of security challenges, and of course, we were able to challenges the guy was going through and advise him on the need uh, that needs to be improved. And of course, since that time, we were able to communicate. Okay, I don't know about everyone else. At least I've lost Abdullahi Balarabi, unfortunately. Abdullahi, are you still able to uh, speak to us? And can others confirm in the chat if that you've lost him as well? Okay, yeah. Thanks, Sahini. Okay. All right, we'll come back to you, Abdullahi. I, uh, you, of course, it's regrettable when this happens, but we got the gist of it. You did not introduce yourself, though. Um, so I'm going to ask, uh, let's see who, let's see who is, uh, so... Uh, I'm going to ask um, Olubowale Ekundare um, to speak next, hoping that the connection will be with you. Olubowale, how are you doing? Uh, please don't forget to introduce yourself before you answer the questions. And we've had we've had more problems than usual this Monday with the uh, francophones, so there seems to be uh, ne probably networking issues uh, in many different countries, and of course we know it very quickly being connected to everyone everywhere through the uh, Peer Hub. Let's try uh, Atahir Abubakar. And, yeah. Oops, oh, sorry, I have... Hello? Yes, Atahir? Yeah, good evening, Reda. Good evening, how are you? Yeah. Yes, we hear you loud and clear, Tahir. So you are yeah, a um, hyperactive scholar. You're active on many fronts. Uh, remind us, don't forget to introduce yourself, even if we already know you, uh, and then tackle the five questions. Yeah, I'm Atahir Abubakar from Nigeria, working with National Primary Healthcare Development Agency in Zamfara State as a technical officer supporting routine immunization. Uh, what has changed for me? For me, through the participation in the peer hub, uh, a lot of things has happened. I have now learned to work together with people to have listening ears, and there's a way you can support your peer using the technical session by Dr. Ellen. I've learned a lot, and the daily session by Charlotte. So, based on those things, I have learned to interact with my colleagues a lot and I've deployed that strategy in my place of work where we have started seeing some changes in just two weeks that we started deploying that kind of technical session to solve some problem from facilities. Then secondly, do you plan to continue? Seriously, I'll con Pia would be my second home from now on because I have learned a lot and I'm, I will continue learning from Pia Hope. Uh, my challenge, as I mentioned that uh, the last previous time, is the availability of PPEs in hard to reach areas where caregivers find it difficult to have PPEs, so they keep on sharing uh, face masks between them. Someone will go, if one has, then they will be sharing the PPEs. If you assess service, when you leave the facility, you issue it to somebody, then it will come and assess the service in some facility. So we are trying to have face masks available in all in three points of our hard to reach facilities and we have so far so good out of the 320 facilities that in hard to reach we are able to push face masks to like 118 with support of some partners then what concrete action do you plan to take in coming weeks to achieve the goal uh, one of the concrete actions is to make sure PPEs are available. And we have the eyes with the State COVID-19 Committee. And we are have a meeting with the chairman, who they have provided us with some uh, face masks. And so I even work with, with some private organizations, which have also supplied face masks to us, like 10,000 pieces of surgical masks. So those are the state engaging stakeholders, various stakeholders, 
so that we can have prevented APPs. Then, uh, okay, how can the hops help you? Uh, this kind of situation, this kind of meeting will help in addressing a lot of our challenges where we can present our findings, our challenges, and our reader and the other part or participant and the uncles will put in, uh, give us a feedback and so that we can improve where we have lapses. Thank you. Atahir Abubakar, thank you very much. Let's go to our next um, uh, next speaker. Let's uh, go to Obed Nubo Nuobe uh, from Ghana. Hello, Rida. Yes, Obed, good to hear your voice. Uh, we hear you loud and clear, maybe a little faint. If you can speak up or increase your uh, the volume of your microphone. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nobel Flip Obed, connecting from Ghana. I'm a health information officer, and precisely, I work at Ahanta West Municipal Health Directorate in the western region of Ghana. Um, we've just finished with our SIs to uh, help improve the immunization in our country with respect to the circulating uh, uh, polio drive uh, that is affecting our, our country. And um, we, we are happy to say that in the municipality we have uh, improve in our coverage. Um, as at the four yesterday, uh, we've been able to uh, hit 100% coverage. Straight to the questions that have to be asked, uh, the first one has to do with uh, what has changed for you through your participation in the peer hope. Indeed, the peer hope has given us uh, um, new ideas, innovation, strategies that can be employed to, to carry out uh, SIAs, routine immunizations. In fact, I see the peer hub as a, 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 a repository that has a lot of information. When, once you get in there, you have most of the information that can help you to improve your routine and outreaches and whatever immunization in your country and I think that is one of the areas that I want to dwell on and um, if nothing at all uh, the peer hub has actually helped me to be more focused and I've been able to come out with a project that I'm actually working with seriously and then also uh, in fact the, the, it has also assisted us, uh, us to be able to give appropriate uh, feedback to our peers um, and uh, those working in the uh, peer hub. The second one has to do with, do you continue to participate in the peer hub? Yes, because of the level of support we, we have and the knowledge that is being shared. New uh, documents are being shared and we learn those things and it's helping us to be able to improve in our immunization uh, coverage. The next one has to do with what is the challenge and goal you have set? Is this in line with your EPI? The challenge that I had that I worked on has to do with Pentatri coverage in Aguna Sub Municipal in Ahanta West decreased from 54.2% in 2019 half year to 44% in 2020 mid year. And we associated it as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, this uh, Penta 3 coverage in our municipality has never declined for the past four years, but it happened for the first time in this year and uh, we associated it to uh, COVID-19. And uh, clearly, uh, we saw, and what actually happened was that Aguna Sub Municipal had a high number of uh, COVID cases during the pandemic. And even the just ended SIA, we also saw it again that there were a lot of uh, caregivers within Aguna South Municipal that uh, felt that we are trying to probably uh, bring in uh, COVID vaccines, you know, despite the intensified health uh, education that went on. 
and we saw that still the coverage compared with the the other four min, uh, sub municipals uh, though if they had about 96 percent but we believe that they should have done better looking at the way we intensified um the campaign in Aguna sub municipal so my goal is to improve on uh, the average pentatric coverage per month from the current 7.3 uh, percent we saw as at uh, june for every month we saw 7.3 percent instead of 8.5 percent and that is what we uh, hope to achieve that every month from september first september uh, to december we'll be getting 8.5 percent and once that is done then we'll be able to um, hit the target for the year and uh, the next question has to do with what concrete actions do you plan to take in the coming weeks to achieve this uh, goal uh, we've already done the uh, briefing to our uh, municipality and they are all aware about uh, the, the program that we involve ourselves in uh, fortunately my director uh, happens to partake uh, in the peer hub and then the municipal EPI coordinator is also currently with us and even in, our, in, in this very room with us. And uh, we are all planning together strategically to be able to uh, get all the children that have been missed. The next uh, coming weeks, because of the SIA, we planned uh, carrying out, um, trying to list all the children that have defaulted uh, pentatree coverage. We are using Pendatre as a proxy to be able to get all the other uh, vaccines that they have missed. And we planned this meeting from uh, on the 7th, but because of SIA meetings, we have uh, moved the meeting to next week. And uh, that is what one of the things that we want to do. We also intend um, creating a platform that will help us to be able to track the Pendatre coverages or vaccinations that are done every uh, week, not waiting until the end of the month. And we intend carrying out uh, monitoring to all the vaccination sessions. And one thing we've seen in Aguna sub-municipal is that the sub-municipal is big and more communities have come up, which some of them are not uh, in our micro plans. And we intend going to the ground to look at all those streets that have come up to be able to map out wherever these children are missing. So uh, basically, these are some of the actions we are taking, and we are going to intensify publicity on that, which is already going, but we are going to intensify publicity. Then uh, lastly, the question has to do, how can the peer hub help you carry out these actions to reach your goal? Um, indeed, when you look at the support on actions, um, the, 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 the support that is normally provided during a peer hub meeting, if it is not working well and you share it with a group, the group is ready to help you to read, uh, think through your, your actions and looking at the, the expertise we have here, I don't think we can fail in any way unless you are not connected. Once you are connected, appropriate feedback will be given and because we continually give a uh, constant feedback to the peer hub we will know that we'll be able to uh, make progress in that direction and i am sure with this i'm ready, ready to partake in the uh, accelerator launch part that will be looked. thank you very much reader Thank you very much, uh, Obed Nuboe from uh, from Ghana. Um, just a quick question, uh, Obed. I know you participated in the uh, in the launchpad uh, in July 2019. Can you explain for new participants? We have you know, about half of the participants who have been who had been scholars already, but the other half, this was their first experience. So, could you explain for them uh, what is the launchpad? What that is going to start on Monday, the 21st of September. Thank you very much, Rida. I think the, the, the launch part um, basically is looking at your project that you have developed and within um, a scope of, say, a month, look at the plan carefully and see those actions that you intended to roll out. Which ones can you roll out within that specified period, that within the one month, and be able to implement them so that it can be measured. 
with and at the end of the day shared with the community that is the general assembly during general assembly meeting and can it's something that we can feel it maybe if there are there are meetings if there are there are, there, are, there has to be a, a particular training you want to do within that scope of one month if it's going to be launched you look at the project and see what you can come out you can tease out from your project and then implement within that short period that is basically what the launch part as later launch part is all about and to be able to continue monitoring your plan even after the launch part to be able to uh, get uh, the desired uh, results that you intended for thank you very much rida Thank you very much indeed uh, to you, uh, Obed. That's a very clear explanation. It's also that um, the <clears throat> uh, the launchpad will be open primarily or almost exclusively to people who have completed the uh, their action plan because that is what you're going to you're going to take the action plan and set a specific yeah, goal for the next four weeks and go for it. You know, just go to uh, achieve that goal. Uh, I see a couple of questions I'd like to answer. One from okay. Dr. Isha Goyal who says, can we have the names of the participants who have earned certificates? So you'll be receiving, if you have earned a certificate, you'll be receiving an email shortly after this uh, uh, after this uh, General Assembly and we'll be actually awarding certificates on the 24th of September at 6 p.m. Geneva. That information and the registration link will be in included in the uh, uh, in the um, uh, in the email that you that I've referred to several times during this uh, uh, this session. So I hope that's uh, an adequate answer, um, Dr. Tanu Srimondal. Uh, many of the participants of Scholars India team have missed giving the reviews in the final version were to be given by the 5th of September. Can you please reconsider for us scholars who missed the opportunity? Um, unfortunately, we feel the deadlines were clear. We did extend by one week. Of course, you know the point is not to penalize people needlessly with, with formal requirements, um, but in principle, you know, we, we already extended by a week. And actually, we are, because we are uh, preparing these certificates uh, starting today, um, we certainly would encourage you let me just uh, you, certainly would encourage you to submit uh, late better to submit late than uh, not submit at all and to complete your reviews um, there that's uh, it for uh, today's um, assembly we've got two minutes left I would like to see let me see um, yeah so we're not going to have time to hear from anyone else let's close here then and let's go back uh, just a quick recap of what exactly is the peer hub um, so it is, for those of you who are following us on Facebook, um, the point is to share experience, spread ideas, and take action to keep vaccination going to panda during the pandemic. What you heard today were some of the action plans developed by participants in the Peer Hub who drew on the ideas engine. Um, over 1,200 ideas collected, generated by immunization staff from 96 countries. Now, here you see what is coming next after the um, Impact Accelerator Launchpad, and that will be exercise two on communication, negotiation, and community engagement. So that is it for today. Let's go back to the music. And thanking you all for your participation today. All of those who are following us on Facebook, thank you. Don't forget to like or add hearts, whichever seems more appropriate. And uh, we look forward to communicating with you this week and reconvening on Monday, this time to launch the Impact Accelerator Launchpad starting Monday for four weeks before we then go into the uh, exercise too. Hope you're finding this useful. We'll be asking you for feedback. So please do complete the feedback. Let us know how we're doing and how we can do better. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>